Hello and welcome to the class, Pastoral Care. Although most pastoral care classes deal with the nurturing and care that it pastors to give to the sheep, this class deals with the ministry that the church can give to the pastors to help alleviate unnecessary stress, financial hardship, and help to prevent pastors and their spouses from becoming casualties of ministry. Please read pages 4 through 32, 37 through 41, 45 through 54 of the book called Alongside Ministering in the Spirit of an Armor Bearer. You also will need a Bible for this class. Your instructors for this class are myself, Pamela Smith, and Bishop Steve Edmondson. The subjects covered throughout this class are the realities of ministry, the importance of the pastoral team, the danger of being overloaded or running on empty, what your church can do to help alleviate the ministry stress, the pastor's wife, and the heart of a pastor taught by Bishop Steve Edmondson. Taking a definition from the book called Alongside, Ministering the Spirit of the Armor Bearer, an adjutant is one who helps assist to give strength and support to pastoral leadership. He or she is the one who is able to consistently, willingly be in place to be an aid to leadership. Whether your position is paid or unpaid, as a ministry assistant or an adjutant, you are in a unique position to witness up close and personal many of the trials, victories, and challenges pastors endure. So often you may find yourself being a sounding board. Your role requires you to have wisdom, compassion, and boundaries. You must know when to speak and how to speak and where to speak. Just because you know something does not mean it's for you to say. You have to use wisdom and know your timing. Your understanding seasons and timing is critical to you aiding your pastor in successfully providing the necessary pastoral care. In our class, Principles of Church Administration, we mentioned the reality of, of the frustrations that accompany ministry. When you combine the numerous responsibilities pastors have in addition to being scrutinized by their congregations, preparing sermons, and maintaining a healthy family and spiritual life, many pastors are overwhelmed. So much so that it bears repeating in this class according to statistics that have appeared in many leading Christian magazines and newspapers, 50% of pastors are so discouraged that they would leave ministry if they could but have no other way of making a living. Pastoring is a calling. Once you know your purpose, the desire to fulfill it consumes you. You pour your all into it and you make the necessary investments to excel in it. I believe that the majority of that 50% are those who have known since their youth that they were called to pastor. They probably are not the ones with the 20 year with the 20 career changes or the ones suddenly saved and delivered at the age of 30. These are the ones who have given their life to ministry. And as a result, their skills in other areas are not as sharp. They know how to pastor, how to preach, how to teach. This is their lives. And when ministry goes bad, they are overwhelmed with what else can they do. I have had conversations with such strong pastors who are in the throes of battle with their church or have just become burnt out with the demands of ministry. 1,500 pastors leave the ministry each month due to more failure, spiritual burnout, or contention in their churches. This is a pretty large number. We are talking about monthly Having worked with churches and seeing up close and personal pastors who have given everything to the point of exhaustion or to see pastors who risked it all for a sexual encounter or to see parishioners at war with the pastor. All of this is damaging and it takes years to recover from. 
You may think you have moved on, but the residue of the experience remains and shapes you. And if you do not lay at the altar and surrender completely to God, these experiences will shape how a church handles its next pastor. These experiences will mold how a pastor views parishioners. Trust has been tainted and the liberty of how one used to minister will be greatly impacted. 80% of pastors feel unqualified and discouraged in their role as pastor. Can you imagine being entrusted with the responsibility to watch over souls? If you are a loving parent of three children, you know what you would do for those children and you feel the weight of caring for them, ensuring that they have what is needed to become strong, compassionate, self-supporting, mature adults. Now imagine the responsibility of watching over 300 or 10,000 or 20,000 souls, plus having to deal with the natural caring as well. If you as a parent of one or three at times feel inadequate or discouraged, how do you think a pastor feels caring for people coming from all types of backgrounds, crises, abuse, anger, unforgiveness, and so forth? Yes, the Holy Spirit is our teacher, but that does not alleviate that one will question if he or she is doing the right thing, saying the right thing, moving at the right pace, leading the way God wants. It is one of the most challenging responsibilities you can have. I'm talking about those who understand the gravity of the call. It is serious business and you want to get it right. 70% of pastors constantly fight depression. 70%. In the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. That's what the word teaches us. Do you know that many pastors are so busy pastoring that they make little time to be in God's presence? A couple of years ago, a certain pastor came to my mind and, and I began to pray for him. And, and I later called him and I recall the conversation I had with this pastor of about 2,500 members who had substituted ministry work with personal time with God. I warned him of the danger and encouraged him to take an immediate vacation. He had a project he was trying to complete and, and said that he would do that after the project was done. Unfortunately, the pressure that that had been building overtook him before he could complete it, and he was forced to take a break. He was dealing with so many fires, opposition, and so forth, that depression set in and anxiety, and he had to get away to get refocused and regain his strength.